And it's another wonderful Monday. I'd like to welcome all the listeners. And if you haven't taken a moment uh, to reflect upon your week coming up, I want you to sit for a minute. Let's take a breath. Let's all take a breath together. Ah, just let the weekend fall off and look at this beautiful uh, weekday week that's coming up in front of us. You know, a lot of people uh, look at look at uh, Monday and the week in front of us as this big daunting thing, and we certainly don't have to. One of the things that we do is we uh, we learn how to have a choice in how we look at things in the recovery world, and so. Uh, let's take a moment and make a choice for this to be a grateful week, a grateful Monday. This is going to be the best ever, the best ever. You know, um, in the world of drug and alcohol recovery and um, certainly in the world of the epidemic of drugs and alcohol that is sweeping, uh, you know, not only our nation and locally, uh, but certainly the world. What <clears throat> you know, there are countless, countless tragedies that take place every day, and I want to, I want to take a moment. Uh, you know, we last week extended our hand to the community of Santa Clarita, and I want to take a moment to do that again. I want to take a moment to um, offer our condolences to the family and the people left behind in the wake of the tragedy uh, that left Katie Evans, uh, mother of six, uh, dead on. Friday, October the 6th, as a result of a car crash. And there is suspected alcohol involved in what's going on. You know, a lot of the details are not out yet, and it's a very, very big deal. But I know this. I know that there are two families and many, many, many others that each one of those families touches that are devastated and sitting in a place right now where it just hurts really, really bad. And whether or not, you know, we... We So I want to offer, you know, the Way Out Recovery is here for Santa Clarita. Our promise to you is to offer uh, quality treatment and to help anybody who we can possibly help. And so I want to for, sort of formally extend a uh, handout to Santa Clarita and offer our help and our assistance in anybody who is – reeling from the pain of any tragedy that they may be facing as a result of drugs and alcohol. You know, when there is uh, tragic circumstances like what happened on Friday, October the 6th uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Katie Evans, um, you know, people are thinking about it, and it's on their mind, and it's heavy on their hearts, and it really, really makes an impact. And it doesn't always take a tragedy to raise awareness, but when there is a tragedy, awareness certainly is, uh, you know, is up, and a lot of people are feeling the pain. And so, again, we want to extend our hand to help anybody who may need help, who may be grieving, who knows anybody who has an alcohol or drug problem that we can help with. <clears throat> we provide high quality treatment in the Santa Clarita Valley. And uh, we are located, we're, we're fairly new. We've opened less than six months ago. And we are located on the corner of Plum and Bouquet Canyon. And um, our phone number is 296-4444. Uh, again, 296-4444, and our website is thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Please reach out to us. Remember that asking for help is the first step in any recovery process. And so, again, we want to extend our hand to Santa Clarita and anybody who may need help uh, from our services. Uh, you know, this is a big week coming up for us. Like I said, we've been open less than six months. We've been putting all the pieces together, and I'd like to make a big announcement. On Thursday, October the 19th at 5 p.m., we will be having our grand opening. Please come out and help support us and our grand opening, and we are going to have uh, uh, many dignitaries from uh, local uh, local dignitaries coming uh, to our grand opening, and I don't have the list in front of me, so I don't want to mess it up. But our but our guest who's coming on after 
the break at 12.30 is Congressman Steve Knight, and he will be one of the persons at our grand opening. But we want to welcome the community. I've sent out emails. We're on Facebook. Uh, and please, please come to our grand opening on October the 19th, which is this Thursday at 5 p.m., and, uh, and learn about all the wonderful things that are happening at the Way Out Recovery. You know, the Way Out Recovery... Uh, has been really in the hearts and the minds of several people uh, for quite some time now, including myself, uh, the Berman family, our clinical director, Brenda Way. You know, in the recovery process, one of the things that I have, I've been clean and sober for a little over 12 years, and I have been, uh, you know, my world has expanded. My world has opened up, and I really... Thank you. They're handing me something. <laughs> so let me tell you real quick. Let me tell you who's going to be at our grand opening, and then I'll get back on that. So we will have with us at the grand opening Congressman Steve Knight, State Senator Scott Wilk, State Assemblyman Dante Acosta, State Assemblyman Tom Lackey, our, our very own Santa Clarita Mayor Cameron Smythe, and our outstanding Chamber of Commerce. And I'm expecting uh, members of the city and members of the Sheriff's Department uh, also to be there, uh, school district as well. So please come out and join us on October the 19th, this Thursday at 5 p.m. You know, about the Way Out Recovery, we are an intensive outpatient program. We provide services to adolescents and adults um, and their families. You know, a treatment center without a family component is still, can still be very effective, but we feel that if the family is involved, uh, that uh, people have a better chance, you know, especially with the younger, the younger crowd, especially with the adolescents, the teenagers. We got to have their families on board. About Gosh, I don't know. I, like I said, I've been sober a little over 12 years, and, and in the recovery process, one of the most beautiful things that has happened in my life is uh, that my world has gotten bigger. My world has expanded, and I've been able to do things that I used to sit back and watch the world doing and wish I could join in on, and my drug and alcohol addiction would not let me do that. And in the recovery process, you know, my whole entire world has opened up. One of the greatest things that I have been able to experience is uh, the love that I have for many of my friends, and I've gotten some really, really outstanding and close relationships. In the process of the recover of our recovery, uh, Mark Berman and Brenda Way and myself uh, all ended up together, you know, um, trying to help each other sort things out. Uh, a lot of a lot of issues come along with uh, drug and alcohol use and abuse, and so it's not just stopping using and drinking. It is also learning how to communicate, learning how to coexist inside a family, learning how to iron out not only differences but to make amends for the things that we have done wrong. And so, Mark and Brenda and I found ourselves. Uh, with with some other wonderful uh, people sitting inside of some recovery groups and um, helping each other sort through our lives, you know, and um, and connecting on a really on a uh, spiritual basis. And so, you know, I think four or five years ago, Brendan, and Mark, and I started, you know, the conversation kind of went, "What if, right? What if we were to?" try to help more people and start something up on our own. And, you know, um, I believe in a big, strong, higher power that's connecting us all. And I believe that uh, that, that higher power has brought a lot of our, um, uh, has brought us together so that the, the way out would open. And things have fallen into place about a year ago, or maybe a year, God, it's been, maybe closer to two years now, right, <laughs> right, Mark? And uh, Mark and I started having really serious talks about opening uh, a, a treatment center. And then through a set of circumstances and an unfortunate uh, tragedy, you know, um, Teresa Berman's sister, uh, Linda Shin, lost her life to, you know, she suffered from uh, substance abuse issues and mental health, and she lost her life. 
And in that tragedy was born an idea about helping people so that nobody else had to ever lose their life. And so, you know, at the, at the heart of the Way Out Recovery SCV is Linda Shin. At the heart of at the heart of the way out recovery is Linda Shin, you know, and Linda lost her life so that we could help other people, you know, and it's and the way out was dedicated to Linda Shin and we will continue to honor her name by helping as many people as we possibly can that walk through the door. And um and that's what we want to do. You know, that's our mission is to provide high quality treatment in the Santa Clarita Valley and elsewhere later on as we grow. God knows with the epidemic that is in Santa Clarita and in the United States and in the world with drugs and alcohol, that there is always a need. You know, and one of the things that I have talked about since the beginning of our uh, opening is that there are so many people that need help that it is a good thing that Santa Clarita is full of, of quality treatment providers, you know, and we, our promise is to work with those providers and to work with the community and to really, really dig in and help as many people as we possibly can. Our treatment, you know, in the, in the decision to open a treatment center, we talked about what we wanted it to look like and what we didn't want it to look like. And we obviously said that we want to be able to provide uh, treatment that's going to work. So some of the things that we are doing differently over there, you know, we really believe in a non-punitive uh, model. We don't believe in shaming or yelling at or putting people down. There was a time in the, in the not-too-distant uh, past when, you know, that model was – was being used a lot and I think the treatment centers don't so much use it anymore. I think they used to call it a tough love model and I'm not saying that we don't need to be direct and that we don't need to have firm boundaries in working with our loved ones and especially with our adolescents but we can do that in a loving and kind and compassionate manner and we can offer treatment that says something like this you know when you walk through the door of our treatment center we're not going to sit down with you and give you a piece of paper and say here's what you need to do what we're going to do is say something like this thank you for for choosing the way out recovery to help you, guide you in your path what can we do to best serve you because we want to be able to serve the person walking through the door we have decided to offer some different modalities of treatment. We do a lot of outdoor activities. We go hiking. Uh, we've gone to the lake a few times. We do uh, some uh, health rhythms, which is a evidence-based protocol that involves uh, using rhythm in uh, treatment modality, relapse prevention, working with the family, very, very close and personal care. We have a small census and we have uh, staff members that, um, uh, that give really, really personal care. Our staff currently consists of our clinical director, uh, Brenda Way, myself, I'm Bob Sheritz, I am the program director. Our primary counselor is uh, Melissa Flowers, and we, about a month ago, brought on a compliance manager who's also a KDAC certified counselor by the name of Albert Alcala, and we want to welcome him to the team. Uh, we just have this outstanding, outstanding team that is growing all of the time, and, and as a result, we're able to offer some really high-quality treatment. You know, when it comes to treatment, there are uh, – it's not just the treatment aspect. You know, when we want uh, – if we want to combat the, the drug and alcohol epidemic that is certainly facing us locally and elsewhere, we want to really look at it in terms of four different uh, kind of process that overlap with each other. We have prevention, we have intervention, we have treatment, and we have recovery. At the Way Out Recovery SCV, we offer all of the following. So prevention, what do, we, what do we need to do to talk to our kids? What do we need to do to offer prevention in our community? The Way Out Recovery is working with the Hart School District, and we are providing drug testing uh, in the Cadre program, uh, which is a prevention effort to help kids say no, to help parents feel better about uh, their kids being safe. 
and, and so that is a real prevention effort. Uh, what we also do is we offer anyone in the community, if you're having trouble talking to your kids about drugs and alcohol, bring them to us. We'll help you talk to them. We have no problem talking about the tough issues. Uh, we are out there. One of the biggest prevention efforts that I think we are doing uh, that almost seems, it's funny because it almost looks like uh, maybe a marketing effort, but it's really a prevention effort. We are very visible in the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, we have uh, we have a big billboard on um, on Railroad Avenue. We have flyers out as as many places as we can. We are on this radio show. If you haven't heard of the Way Out, then this year your, your first time. Spread the word. If you haven't gone on our Facebook page, go on our Facebook page and and like us. Uh, and go to KHTS Facebook page, and you can connect with. Uh, the Way Out Recovery SCV as well. We are also on Instagram, so we're really, really, really trying to put out um, our name, our logo, um, and be visible in the community. So, and use that as an opportunity. You know, when you're driving along with your kids and you see our billboard, say, hey kids, see that Way Out Recovery right there? Let's talk about drugs and alcohol. Let's talk about how you can say no to your friends. Let's talk about how you're going to be, not if you will be tempted, but, but when you're going to be tempted and what you're going to say to those people. Let's talk about, you know, the, the negative effects of drugs and alcohol. You know, you don't have to be a drug addict or an alcoholic for tragic things to happen. You know, I don't know the circumstances of what happened in that car crash uh, with Katie Evans, uh, but apparently there is alcohol involved. At least that's what they're saying. And I don't know whether or not that driver has an, is, a, is an alcoholic, but when you add alcohol and you add driving or any other uh, circumstances, alcohol can, can absolutely uh, play a big part. We... Uh, we don't oftentimes look at that. You know, there's a lot of controversy lately about uh, whether or not using cannabis is okay, you know, smoking, smoking marijuana. And I'm not certainly going to get into a debate, but one of the things that we fail to do is we look at that and go, oh, my God, it's legal now, and people get real kind of uh, crazy about that. And let me remind you that the number one uh, biggest uh, problem with drugs is with alcohol. And it's been legal for a very long time, although it is not legal until you're 21 years old. But we should be having, our t having talks with our kids about alcohol as well. And we neglect to do that sometimes because we see, oh, my gosh, people are dying from heroin and pills and all this stuff. And we forget that all drugs have a negative impact. And let's talk to our kids about those negative impacts. And those are the kind of conversations that we can have on a regular basis uh, that will help with prevention. You know, I have a five-year-old son named Dean, and I have an eight-year-old son uh, named Jack, and I talk to them. There's not a day that goes by, probably because of what I do, but I, I think I'd be having that, that discussion anyway because I'm in recovery, is there's not a day that goes by that I don't look for uh, opportunities to teach my kids about drugs and alcohol. And so look for those opportunities as much as you possibly can so that you can talk to your kids. You know, that's the prevention effort. Intervention as well. Uh, you know, um, there are some really qualified interventionists. And when we think of intervention, we all a lot of times think of maybe the show or formal interventions or what have you. But I'll tell you, there's many, many opportunities that come our way uh, for family members, loved ones, and professionals like The Way Out to intervene in somebody's drug and alcohol use. Look for those opportunities. If somebody has just had a negative experience happen to them, they've been arrested, they've gotten in a car crash, they're in the hospital, uh, their family members have talked to them, uh, they, they're missing school, there's, their uh, grades are failing, they're feeling depressed, there's a lot of different things that come out of drug and alcohol uh, use and abuse, those are opportunities for loved ones and professionals to intervene in somebody's life. Uh, and if you're not comfortable doing that, please, again, call us at The Way Out, 296-4444, and we will help you do those interventions. When, uh, when an intervention takes place in a person's life, they are at a really susceptible place 
to take advantage of in helping them enter into a treatment facility. Um, we provide outpatient treatment and we can help if that is um, what's, uh, what's necessary. We do full assessments uh, upon talking to somebody and we place them in appropriate levels of care. We also work with very high quality inpatient treatment centers and detox centers so that if somebody needs that, we can help them get in there as well. And once a person is into a treatment process, whether it's outpatient or inpatient, you know, it doesn't stop there. I've been doing this. I've been in the Santa Clarita Valley uh, providing professional drug and alcohol addiction treatment uh, for approximately the last 10 years. And in that time, I've had many, many, many families uh, show up and they get their person in treatment and they think, whoo, man, we're out of the woods now. We got them into treatment. And I want to say, for all of you listening, that treatment is just the beginning. That is absolutely getting them in the door is just the beginning. And getting, in the, getting a person into the, in the door is really the biggest step that we can take. You know, oftentimes you'll hear that if a person doesn't want it, they're not going to get it, and they have to want it, and all this different stuff. And I want to blow that myth out of the water and say that a person gets it when they're exposed to it. When they're exposed to recovery and when they're exposed to treatment and then we're exposed to a world of people who are getting clean and sober, that in that arena right there, they can hear the message. And that is where recovery begins right there. So treatment is just the beginning. Um, there are many different levels of treatment. You know, the first thing that we do when a person comes in is we assess for the most urgent uh, things that are present. We look for any medical conditions and we look for any psychiatric conditions. If a person has medical conditions that place them at a risk for being uh, very severe medically compromised, such as withdrawal from alcohol or benzodiazepines or opiates, or they have any other uh, compromising medical conditions that go along with drug and alcohol use, that we immediately make sure that they see that they get medical care and make sure that they're uh, going to be cleared for us medically. Psychiatrically, we assess for suicidality and homicidality that is harm to self or others. Uh, we take that very, very seriously. If there is any indication of a mental health condition that places somebody in a position to not be safe, then we seek immediately psych immediate psychiatric care as well. And then after that comes all of the uh, other issues that we uh, help people sort through. And as we do the assessment, we break down into many different categories. You know, I, I, we look at the substance use and we look at the history of substance use. Not everybody is, is the same. Everybody needs to be treated different. Uh, not everybody's reaction to the, same, uh, to the same drug is the same. And so we look at that and we really place personal care on each and every uh, person uh, based on those needs and where they're at currently. We look at all their medical conditions as well, and then the, the and then the next thing we look at is their psychiatric uh, conditions and their behavioral conditions. Are they in trouble? And we sort through all that stuff as well. How motivated is a person to stay in treatment and recovery? We look at that area as well, and then we look at d different um, what we call co-occurring uh, relapse potential. Any stressors in a person's life. And then we also look at the recovery environment. Do they have support? Is their family supportive? Is their family going to be detrimental uh, to the recovery process as well? And then once we get a person into treatment, uh, you know, it's never, ever, I don't know about never, very, very rarely is a person able to go to like a 30-day inpatient program and be done. It is always best if we can follow up with as much treatment as we possibly can ongoing uh, so that we can, you know, um, uh, addiction and recovery is a lifelong process. And then the last component that I mentioned is the recovery process. You know, recovery is a lifelong uh, process. It is not unlike many other medical conditions. One that comes to mind right off the bat is diabetes. You know, somebody who has um, been diagnosed with diabetes has to do things on a regular basis that are going to put them in a place where they can live comfortably with, um, with their diabetes. I have a brother who's 10 years younger than me. He's been diagnosed at the age of eight, and he has to live a life 
uh, that is accentuates his diabetes. And if he is doing what he's supposed to do, m minding his exercise and his health and his uh, and his blood sugar and his diet, uh, he's doing relatively well, and you can't even tell that he's got diabetes. Well. Addiction treatment is just like that in the ongoing recovery process. We have to live a life that accentuates our recovery. So we look at the four areas of body, mind, emotion, and spirit. And we teach our clients ongoing how to take care of all those areas in their life so that they don't get to a point where the stress level is so high that, that it causes a relapse. Relapse rates don't have to be high. They can be as low as, as, uh, you know, as they've ever been in history. We have treatment out there. We have wonderful organizations out there that will help keep them low. I, um, I want to, again, invite everybody to our grand opening on October the 19th, Thursday. And, uh, and we will, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back. Uh, with Congressman Steve Knight right after this. Thanks. Did you know that nearly one in three women will experience domestic violence in her lifetime? And in Santa Clarita, our community supports its own domestic violence center with a shelter home, 24-hour crisis hotline, and bilingual counseling programs. If you or someone you know needs help, we're here. The 24-hour crisis hotline number is 259-HELP. For more information, go to dvcsantaclarita.com because no one should tolerate domestic violence. 259-HELP. Hi, this is Bill Boldy, principal of Saugus High School, with a message about my good friends at AV Equipment Rentals. Through the years, we've had a number of projects and activities on our campus where we've had to secure the support of AV Rentals for various pieces of equipment and get the job done right. Don Crookshank and Mike Redmond and their staff have always been very generous, courteous, and helpful to us. And it's nice to know that a community-grounded company like AV Equipment Rentals is there for us at Saugus High School and I know they'll be there for you too. Call the people who care about you. AV Equipment Rental. The big one is back. Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas. The biggest big cop is back in town. Circus Vargas presents their new mega-hit production, Steam Cirque, on the big top at the Antelope Valley Mall, October 19th to the 23rd. Then at Valencia Town Center, October 26th through the 30th. Always the finest in live entertainment and fun for the entire family. See death-defined acrobats, daredevils, comedians, and much, much more. Arrive early for some interactive pre-show fun where your kids can be the circus stars. Discount coupons available at Camacho Auto Sales. Don't wait. Get your tickets now by calling 877-GOT-FUN-1 or go online at CircusVargas.com. It's the ultimate entertainment extravaganza. Don't miss Steam Cirque at Circus Vargas for memories that last a lifetime. The big one is back. Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas. Circus Vargas. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back to the Way Out Recovery Hour. I'm Bob Sheritz, and this is the Way Out Recovery. Um, we have in studio with us today Congressman Steve Knight. Welcome, Congressman. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Yep, thanks for being here. I want to take a couple of minutes before we get uh, into our show with the Congressman to again, uh, you know, extend our condolences to the family of Katie Evans. Uh, she was a young lady who lost her life on October the 6th and left behind six kids and a husband. And um, there are ways to support that family um, emotionally and financially. If you go to the KHTS website, hometownstation.com, you can find links on there to uh, help support the family. You know, I can't imagine what it must be like for that husband right now, for her husband right now with six kids. And oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And and two of those children are brand new babies, brand, brand new, new twins, brand new twins. They are. And so they're going to be struggling. And that, you know, a tragedy like this uh, really shakes our community. And so the way out has been publicly offering 
uh, assistance in the, in the form of if anybody is suffering from drug or alcohol issues um, or you're gr just grieving from this, please give us a call at 296-4444 and allow us to help you uh, in any way that we possibly can. I hate when tragedy happens, period, but around drugs and alcohol, it is, it, you know, I hate to use tragedy and opportunity in the, same, in the same sentence, but it is an opportunity for you to start talking about those with those that you may think have a problem, you know. I don't know the circumstances of what happened, but, but apparently, uh, allegedly, there's alcohol involved with the driver, and, you know, she doesn't have to be an alcoholic for something bad to happen. Right. You know, you, you have a few drinks and you get behind the wheel and you never know what's going to happen. And so I want to urge our community to talk to your kids about the dangers of drugs and alcohol on a regular basis all the time. Um, the Way Out Recovery is here in the Santa Clarita Valley. We've been open uh, a little less than six months, and we are having our grand opening on Thursday, October 19th. That is this Thursday, 5 p.m. We are located at the corner of Plum and Bouquet Canyons. And um, one of the persons who's going to help us at our grand opening is Congressman Steve Knight. So welcome again to the show. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Thursday will be a big day. Uh, it's, uh, we're very thankful that, uh, you'll be in the community and you'll be help, helping people. And, uh, you know, sometimes people don't know that they need help and, uh, and that's part of it too. And that's part of families and friends reaching out and saying, you know, we need to get help and we need to be there for, uh, this person to make sure that they get off the drug, get off, uh, alcohol and kind of get back to, uh, kind of back to life. Yeah, interventions can come in many different forms. And, uh, you know, as loved ones sitting around someone who's got a drug and alcohol problem, you know, I, uh, we, we at The Way Out like to encourage people, like, get in there and do that intervention. And if you can't right. do it, call us. We'll help you with it. Uh, we, we don't mind talking about the tough issues, <laughs> whether it's directly to somebody or in the community. Um, but we need to. You know, there is – we hear the word epidemic and we see the numbers – and, uh, you know, we have big events like heroin kills and it really raises awareness. But when I say drug epidemic or alcohol epidemic, uh, Congressman, you know, uh, it's big, right? Well, you know, I think uh, that people are seeing what uh, fentanyl and, uh, and heroin do. Uh, and fentanyl has been killing our kids for a long time. And but uh, over the last three, four, five years, you've seen this kind of epidemic especially in the northeast of the country and then moving into the Midwest. Uh, you've always seen these, these big drugs in uh, the big areas, whether it be Chicago or L.A. or Miami. And, uh, but now it's hitting a lot of the small towns, and uh, it's just a huge, huge movement of uh, being able to get a drug, being able to use the drug, and being able to talk to people that have used the drugs. And... Uh, so that's, um, that's a difference in the last five years. There's no doubt about it. Well, there, we had a, um, one of the friends of our, our program, and certainly the show, is a man by the name of Sam Quinones, and he's written a book called Dreamland. And he sort of tells the story of the changing face of heroin and now the fentanyl heroin and the opiates and everything, all the way from uh, you know the prescription opiates right. to where it's now it's readily available heroin. Right. And you're right. When you talk about, uh, you know, you, it's always been in Los Angeles, always been in Chicago, always been in New York. You know, you've heard about heroin, but now it's hitting Youngstown, Ohio. Right. Right. And there's, uh, uh, yeah. Simi Valley, Santa Clarita. I right. mean, it's uh, it's hitting. And, uh, you know, when I was a police officer with LAPD, the last few years, we were seeing a lot of changes, especially in prescription drugs. You would see these pharmacy parties where. People, or kids would go into their medicine cabinets of their parents and grab drugs, and they'd come into the party, and they'd throw them all in a hat. And people would take, you know, two, three pills and see what it would do. And um, so, obviously, a lot, of, uh, a lot of problems from there, and many kids died from doing these types of things, and we're continually seeing that with, uh, with pharmaceutical drugs and prescription drugs. But it is not a uh, isolated situation anymore. It's not in the big cities. It is moving out into all areas of America. And, you know, if you don't say anything or if you don't try and help somebody, then uh, what are you doing? 
Well, there's yeah, there's we don't live in a world where you can put blinders on these right. days. It's if you don't if you don't do that, it, you're going to see it around you. Right. And and think about that for a minute, because I I have worked with kids who have talked about those the pharmaceutical parties. Think about that and how, as a parent out there listening, how important it is for you to talk to your teenager. There's parties going on where there's a bowl sitting in the middle of the party and everybody has grabbed a handful of the medicine out of the medicine cabinets, thrown them in a mix, and people just take a couple and let's see what happens. Yeah. I mean, my God, right? That's that's the world we live in today. Well, it, you know, it's a, it's a good thought, too, that, uh, you know, we always talk about uh, things that are dangerous to kids. Well, these are dangerous to kids. So, uh, you know, if you do have a prescription, you um, the best thing to do is to make sure that it is uh, away from kids so that they can't get it. You know, everybody likes to put things in their medicine cabinet and say, well, that's where I keep my medicine, my Band-Aids, my toothpaste. But, you know, in today's day and age, uh, like you say, Bob, you want to talk to your kids, but you also want to kind of restrict them from getting a hold of something like this or their friends getting a hold of this. So uh, I would treat prescription drugs as something that I want to safeguard and keep away from my kids. Absolutely. Keep it in a safe. You know, it's, it, I heard somebody say one time, isn't it interesting that the most dangerous thing in our house we keep in the only room where a perfect stranger can go in and have absolute privacy? Right. 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 <laughs> it's like, hello. So we got to change yeah. our thinking. We have right. to change our thinking. We're just we just haven't been aware that this is the most dangerous thing. And now we are we're very much aware of, of what's going on. And um, and so. We know we know drugs are dangerous. We've we you know we uh, here's what's interesting is in Santa Clarita. I've grown up here since my parents moved here in 1976, so I've been here a long time. And I've watched the way that we talk about even like DUIs or things that have to do with with drugs. And it used to be kind of like ah, we don't really want to do that. And 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 God bless Santa Clarita in the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, like we are really willing to talk about it. It's right. in the schools, it's in the sheriff's right. departments, it's in the newspapers, everybody's talking about it. But for a while there, when we first sort of changed that as a policy, everybody was, oh my God, Santa Clarita is the worst drug town around. And I and it's not the truth. No, it's not the no, truth. It's, We're the same as many, right? It, it's not the truth. I, you yeah. know, I always say Santa Clarita is one of the greatest towns in in uh, in California, if not the country. But you still have problems, and you do have problems in any uh, any small town or big city. So, uh, the best thing to do is talk about it and try and figure out the problem and correct it. And if you can correct it, you know, get as many people involved as you can because that that helps. So. Uh, I think that that's one of the great things about Santa Clarita is they are willing to talk about anything or say, hey, this isn't right. What can we do? And uh, there's a lot of problem solvers. So that's a good thing. Well, we have a lot of outstanding programs out here, you know, in the sheriff's department, in the school district, in the city. Uh, we put on free community events every month. So we're really trying to educate the community. Um, you know, as we grow as a city, one of the hot topics recently is Proposition 64, right? Uh, recreational marijuana use. It's legal. Uh, the people voted for it. And there's been some push from Santa Clarita to allow any dispensaries or any stores come into Santa Clarita. Where do you think that's headed with Santa Clarita? You know, I don't, I don't know. I think Santa Clarita will take a, uh, a stance that uh, that's not what they want inside the city limits. Um, but I don't know. Um, I have my opinions of recreational marijuana use. I think that uh, it does lead to things. It does um, kind of lower your inhibitions to maybe trying something else. Um, so I think that Santa Clarita will be one of those cities that will go in there and they'll take a close eye on it and they will say, okay, is this something that is going to benefit our citizens? And that's what a city council, in my opinion, should do. Is this going to benefit? If we resurface this road or put up a new stoplight, does this benefit our citizens or does this stop something or inhibit? So I think that that's what they'll do. They'll go in there and say, is this going to benefit our citizens? Is this going to make our community better? Or is this going to bring in problems? Right. And, be, you know, when, when, a, uh, when a topic like that comes up, it's easy for me and other people to get real opinionated on it without doing the research, you right. know. And so one of the beautiful things about Santa Clarita is that before any decision is made, 
let's do the research. And I know that, um, that there's collaboration with county and with state to look at the evidence and see what's going on. And it's kind of a, it's a funky balance that's going on. Is we are, last I heard, like third most business friendly in a uh, city in the United States or something like that. Yeah, right? first, first in the county. <laughs> first in the county, right? And this is also yeah. the third biggest city in LA County. Right. And so it's, it's a large city that uh, has big problems now and big issues. Um, right. Not just crime or not just drugs, but uh, other issues that uh, come with a big city of, of a quarter of a million people. Well, the unique thing about Santa Clarita is that we're, you know, it is hometown. Right. It is a small bubble. Everybody knows everybody. But make no mistake about it, there's almost 300,000 people here. <laughs> like, there's a lot of people in Santa Clarita, and so it's big, right? But we look at something like that, business-friendly city. So revenue, you know, uh, uh, stores like that are going to they're gonna be uh, good businesses for Santa Clarita. They are going to sure. bring revenue. And then, but we really have to do the research as to whether or not it's going to cause more harm. You know, and if they're regulated properly, who knows? It's just like yeah, any other. I, you know, and I, I trust them. I think that they, they do. They look at things uh, and say the goods and the bads and the pros and the cons, and, uh, and they'll make a good decision. Right. So we, um, you know, one of the things in treatment that used to be a good motivator was law enforcement. And we, you know, when, when the drugs were, um, when we were able to prompt people with things like, uh, Prop 36, where right. mandatory mandatory treatment if you got in trouble with drugs. You know, a lot of that has gone away. When we come back after the break, let's talk a little bit about Proposition 47 and how that has changed the face of whether or not we can drive people into treatment. Uh, you know, for those of you listening that don't understand what that is, uh, is anything that's a nonviolent offense regarding drugs or even theft under a certain amount is not a felony anymore. Right. Non, non, non. Yeah. And so we can just write a ticket on that. And so it doesn't necessarily force people into treatment like it used to. Please return after this break. We are in studio with Congressman Steve Knight hitting some of the heavy issues. We'll be back right after this. Discover Verano at Aliento, a 55 plus community with exclusive resort style amenities designed just for you. Join us as we celebrate the grand opening of the new club at Verano on Saturday, October 21st from 1 to 5. Come party at the new clubhouse and see our model homes. We'll have music by the pool, refreshments, and more. From the 14 exit Golden Valley Road, Aliento is located off Golden Valley Road in Oak Crest. See you there. There's an important meeting you need to hold away from the office. The in-laws are coming to town. Uh-oh. A major client is visiting Santa Clarita. Your husband's brother is about to visit. Oh, and his four kids? La Quinta knows life in Santa Clarita can be stressful, so your guests can wake up on the bright side, meetings can run smoothly, and even your mother-in-law will squeeze out a compliment. La Quinta Inn & Suites, on the old road, just south of Lyons. Call about their special Santa Clarita discounts, 286-1111. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located in Old Town Newhall, the CTG also offers workshops for the young actor and your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go to canyontheater.org. Welcome back to the Way Out Recovery Hour. I'm Bob Sheritz, and it is my uh, pleasure to be in studio today with Congressman Steve Knight. Welcome back, sir. Thanks, Bob. And we have been talking. You know, we've been hitting various issues about drugs, and I, you know, we're in a we're in a world of drug of a drug epidemic. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we've watched the numbers go up over the last, God, however long, but certainly the last 10 years. 
and we hear a lot of talk about opioid em- epidemic, the opiate epidemic, and that is true. But uh, but all drugs are on the rise, and all drugs are, are there's staggering numbers that are going on, and so. You know, this is, in my opinion, the most important issue that we can that we can ever possibly look at. More people die from uh, from accidental drug overdoses today than they do from car crashes. Right. You right. know, that's, that's a big number. That's an unbelievable number. Yeah, it's a big number. And so, you know, uh, you're you're in the in the fight to change, to to do everything you can for the people and change policies and do everything you can that's going to benefit. Uh, the people that you represent, and we appreciate that very much. But it must be tough right now to be. Well, uh, you know, there's there's differing opinions. There's there's opinions that uh, you know you don't want to put people in and incarcerate them. Um, you want to get them help. Well, sometimes that's um, something that you need to do on both. Uh, if they go to incarceration, that doesn't just mean we want them to sit there. We want to get them help. We want to get them treatment, and we want to get them off the drug or, um, or alcohol so that they don't reoffend on uh, drunk driving or whatever it is that got them there. So it is tough, but there is a movement that uh, some people just don't want to put people in, car- in, in jail or in prison. Right. And part of that is, well, we don't want to mandate that they have to go get treatment either. So, you know, I, uh, I've been around a lot of people that have had uh, drug addiction and, uh, and had difficulties in their, in their life. And sometimes you just have to say, you know what, this is what you got to do. And uh, if you don't, then you're just waiting for them to go to the next step and go to the next step and hit rock bottom at some point and then hopefully figure it out all on their own either A, before they die, or B, before they go to jail for something, or C, before, you know, hopefully a family member comes in and helps out, or a friend. But, um, you know, sometimes the law enforcement world can help out with that, and a lot of that is the, the um, help with um, the treatments, and uh, mandatory treatment does help in many cases, and uh, there's just a move to take that away, and I just don't get it. Well, it's un- it's I mean it's unfortunate because the the myth out there is that you have to want it in order to get it, and I try to debunk that myth and say that you have to be exposed to it in order to get it, and um, and there are many many people, including myself, who were prompted by uh, consequences, got me in the door, and once I was in the door of a recovery place, I said, oh my God, there's a whole other world out here. But if I'm not pushed in the door by my consequences, I may never be exposed to that. And in today's world, if we sit around and wait for people to hit bottom, you know, for a lot of people, bottom mm-hmm. is death. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's folks that have gone through a situation that are best equipped to really deal with someone who is going through the situation. And I, and I, I agree with that. But there's also a point where you've gone to a point in your life and you can't get out and you're just going to keep going down that road and unless somebody says you know what that's it you've got to go do this um you might be saving their life at that point and probably you are so i don't know why as a society we wouldn't want to do that well there's been you know there's Historically, there's been a lot of people that have been incarcerated because of drug and alcohol use and not too many programs offered inside of that system right there. And I like to think that that's changing, at least. I know that currently in L.A. County, there is drug and alcohol uh, programs inside of the jail. Uh, A few of my friends who are also professionals have gotten jobs and are now working in the jail system to try to help people that are incarcerated. So when they do get out, they have a better chance. And and I think you're right, Bob. I think that it is a kind of a a mix of of the change of what we're going through and for a long time i think that you know you got arrested for this you went and you served your time and i think over the last maybe five ten years it's been you've been arrested for this but you know what we want to help you and we don't want you to be arrested for that again Mm -hmm. so the way we take care of that is we you know we go for the the problem and the problem is alcohol or drug abuse so if we can get you off that Chances are you're not going to reoffend, and you're going to go back and have a have a life again instead of a life of where you're chasing chasing the drug. Yeah, not only that, but now a productive and um, 
a uh, member of society and right. you're adding to adding to the society you know instead of um, the drug and alcohol use taken away from it so man it's been a pleasure having you on oh, here thank you bob I, I appreciate it i appreciate what you do this is a um this is a tough thing to talk about it's a tough thing for families to deal with and uh what you do helps them and helps people on the road to recovery so thank you very much Thank you. Looking forward to and keep up the good work you're doing and looking forward to seeing you on Thursday. I'll be there. Uh, October 19th is our grand opening. We are on the corner of Plum and Bouquet Canyon, 5 p.m. Show up and, um, and, and, and hear some great words about recovery and treatment and also uh, have our Chamber of Commerce do this, uh, do an outstanding ribbon cutting. So, again, this Thursday, October 19th, 5 p.m., the Way Out Recovery uh, show up. Thanks again, Congressman Knight. Thank you, Bob. This is Bob Sherritt's The Way Out Recovery, and we will see everyone next week.